Nerg. Strength 9, Perception 6, Endurance 10, Charisma 4, Intelligence 5, Agility 8, Luck 5. Nerg's story. Nerg's exceptional physique has made him one of the best hunters in the tribe. Nerg's first and usually only impulse is to crush anything he can't figure out. Nerg has become quite adept at crushing and slicing and dicing. Nerg would like to prove his worthiness to lead the tribe and he'll let nothing stand in his way. Heavy handed and gifted, so he's heavy on the strength, low on the brains. Mingan. Strength, average, perception, 8, endurance, 4, charisma, 4, intelligence, 5, agility, 10, luck, 5. Sneak, 55, lockpick, steel, skilled in small frame. Mingan's story. Mingan's whisper-soft tread and acquisitive fingers have always aided his natural curiosity. Several years ago, the tribe decided that Mingan's talents would be best used on someone else. Since then, Mingan has been the tribe's most accomplished scout. However, the tents of nearby tribes provide little challenge these days. It's time to scout farther afield. So he's like stealthy sneaky. Chitsa. Strength 4, Perception 5, Endurance 4, Charisma 10, Intelligence 7, Agility 6, and Luck 4. Speech barter and first aid, one handed and sex appeal. Chitsa's story. Chitsa has always been able to convince others to do things her way. Her winning personality and stunning good looks have often caused others to underestimate the tribe's best trader. In the course of her frequent journeys, Chitsa has learned to deal with the perils of traveling the wastes. Now the tribe needs help, and new paths beckon to Chitsa. Well, Chitsa's obviously a manipulator. He's a sneaky spy guy, and he's an outright warrior type. So I think I'll create one myself. I'll just go with female again. Now, what I do know is in Fallout 2, there's the power armor, which will add 3 to my strength. There's the advanced power armor that will add 4. There's a gain perk. And that would add 1 to my strength. And also the operations at the Brotherhood of Steel, which would add 1. So I'm actually going to lower this one more. I want to go heavy on charisma and intelligence. I want to try and get some agility in there too. Perception, the ability to see, hear, taste, and notice unusual things. A high perception is important for a sharpshooter. Modifies sequence and range combat distance modifiers. Endurance. Stamina and physical toughness, a character with a high endurance will survive where others may not. Modifies hit points, poison, and radiation resistance, healing rate, and additional points per level. Charisma. Actually, this is important because in this game, it will affect how many party members you can have. A combination of appearance and charm, a high charisma is important for characters that want to influence people with words, modifies NPC reactions and barter prices. So I want a high charisma in this one because I want to gain as many party members as possible. Okay, so intelligence. Intelligence 
knowledge, wisdom, and the ability to think quickly. A high intelligence is important for any character, modifies the number of new skill points per level, dialogue options, and many skills. Agility, coordination, and the ability to move well. A high agility is important for any active character, modifies action points, armor class, and many skills. And luck. Fate, karma, extremely high or low luck will affect the character somehow. Events and situations will be changed by how lucky or unlucky your character is. So, what's this? Should I go blonde? Your silken honey blonde tresses have always made you stand out among your tribe. The boys ogle the girls scowl and you wouldn't have it any other way. Red-haired female. Some say your crimson hair indicates that you lack a soul. But when you look this good, who needs one? Interesting. Style default. Unlike most of your fellow tribeswomen who wear their long hair in a ponytail, your black hair is square cut and shoulder length. So what if they snicker and call you Buckethead behind your back? Interesting. You know what? I never ever changed the appearance before. Let's go with red. Okay, I'm fond of energy weapons. Speech! And next one will be, oh, let's go with Sneak. Now, optional traits. Gifted. You have more innate abilities than most. So you have not spent as much time honing your skills. Your primary statistics are plus one, but you lose 10% on all skills to start and receive five less skill points per level. Nah. Skill. Since you spent more time improving your skills than a normal person, you gain five additional skill points per experience level. This trade-off is that you do not gain as many extra abilities. You gain a perk every four levels, Nah. Sex appeal. You've got the right stuff. Members of the opposite sex are attracted to you, but those of the same sex tend to become quite jealous. Nah. Chem resistant. Chems only affect you half as long as normal, but your chance to be reliant is also 50% of normal. You are more easily influenced by chems. Your chance to be reliant by chem use is twice normal. But you recover faster from their ill effects. Good natured, you studied less combative skills as you were growing up. Your combat skills start at a lower level, but first aid, doctor, speech, and barter are substantially improved. Okay, so what's first aid, doctor, and speech at? Speech at 55, first aid, and doctor 17. Okay, so it lowers my weapons by 10%. Interesting. Jinxed. The good thing is that everyone around you has more critical failures in combat. The bad thing is, so do you. Bloody mess. By some strange twist of fate, people around you die violently. You always see the worst way a person can die. Well, I used Bloody Mess in my Fallout 1. I'm going to try and use something different in this one. Bruiser. A little slower, but a little bigger. You may not hit as often, but they will feel it when you do. Your total action points are lowered, but your strength is increased. No, I'm not interested in that. Fast Metabolism. Your metabolic rate is twice normal. 
This means that you are much less resistant to radiation and poison, but your body heals faster. Small frame, you are not quite as big as the other villagers, but that never slowed you down. You can't carry as much, but you are more agile. Let's see. How much does it lower my carry weight? 85. But it does boost my armor class and my agility. One-hander. One of your hands is very dominant. You excel with single-handed weapons, but two-handed weapons become a problem. Finesse. Your attacks show a lot of finesse. You don't do as much damage, but you cause more critical hits. So my critical chance is boosted by 10%. Finesse. Kamikaze. By not paying attention to any threats, you can act a lot faster in turn. This lowers your armor class to just what you are wearing, but you sequence much faster in a combat turn. Oh. Eh. Heavy-handed. You swing harder, not better. Your attacks are very brutal, but lack finesse. You rarely cause a good critical, but you always do more melee damage. Fast shot. You don't have time to aim for a target attack because you attack faster than normal people. It costs you one less action point for guns and thrown weapons. You know what? I never tried fast shot before. I want to try that. And sm I use small frame in Fallout 1, but what can I say? I want another agility point. So I'm going to try something new with Fast Shot. And I'm using the same small frame. And I have a different hair color. I'm going to take one out of luck. And put that in... Wait. There. Yeah, because I had... Endurance, I don't have any um, memory modules for that, but Perception I do, so I can get that boosted. Intelligence, I will boost with Mentats, and my Charisma. Okay. Okay, that's fairly different from what I've chosen before. Actually, I'm going to take another one out of luck. Let's go with this. Okay. I think I'm done. I'm too scared to go with bad luck, so... So let's give this a try!